three, two, one, blast off! Yay! Hello everyone, I am Third Mario Brother, and welcome back to Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we caught the last of the legendary golems, which was Registeel. And now that we have Regirock, Regiice, and Registeel sitting in our PC, just having oh so much fun with all those other normal Pokemon that they don't give a gosh darn about, we are actually going to continue on with the story, which requires us to sail on the ocean blue, as is to be expected with a game like Pokemon Emerald, in which the region is about half water. So, at this point, we are still chasing after the Team Aqua Submarine to catch up with those of you who forgot what is going on right now in the main story. And in order to find a submarine, of course, you're going to want to go out on the water, and you're going to want to go underwater as well. So we have our good friend, the diving Pokemon Blue, with us. What's the hurry? Let's take it slow and easy. Ooh la la. Surfing isn't as easy as it seems. Isn't that right? Uh... Yeah, it's really, really hard telling my Pokemon to carry me on its back, man. <laughs> Life is just so difficult. But here we have Tisha and Clarence. And Tisha seems like a little bit more of a nickname than an actual name. But you know what? I'm not going to make any snap judgments like that because perhaps I don't know everything there is to know about names. Let's go and aerial ace that uh, Sharpedo there. Should be able to take it out. Ah, not quite. Dang it. Sharpedo is really, really frail. It has really good, like, attacking stats. It has really, really, really high physical attack. But it's also got really low defenses and really low HP. And in a generation in which all water moves were um, special attacks, it's kind of a it's kind of a hindrance to Sharpedo. So he does not have the best of situations here. But either way, that half shark is going to fall down into the ocean blue, down into the depths where he belongs, down back with his shark brethren. And we can go ahead and use Psychic on this Chinchow. And continue on our merry way. So, here we go. Get a tiny bit of experience on everybody. And I forgot I still have the uh, EXP share on Heretic. Oh my. I wanted to relax a little more. But instead, I'm just running on top of this blue water. Oh. Winning sure isn't easy. <laughs> I know. My life is hard, man. Winning all the time. Oh god, I can't even handle it. Don't you hate making mistakes when you're in a rush? That's why I try to take things slowly. Well, why were you sprinting on top of that water a second ago, man? That doesn't make any sense if you don't want to make mistakes, because sprinting on top of water, I know, my friend, is a very, very difficult endeavor. Either, either way, either way. <laughs> Pronouncing words properly, let's go ahead and throw up a Max Repel and come up to this gigantic um, bit of dark water here. And I'll show you guys where we are on the map. We're in, like, the middle of this little passageway right here, and we'll see all of this water. And actually, this water goes on for a way up to the uh, north and in other directions as well. So, you know you're in around the right spot when you see a gigantic patch of water. Because if you dive right here, ooh, we have a cave opening. And stumbling upon this for the first time, stumbling upon any of the caves for the first time underwater was really cool. Because it was like, oh my god, the world goes on. But here it is. Submarine Explorer 1 is painted on the hull. It's the one that Team Aqua stole in Slateport. Oh my god, they're all living in a yellow submarine, guys. We have to go ashore. We have to find them, and we have to end this rebellious lifestyle of theirs. So here we are in the seafloor cavern, which is Team Aqua's sort of base of operations at the moment. And let's go ahead and take this place on now. Before you come here, make note of the fact that you need both Surf, Dive, Strength, and Rock Smash to complete this place. Well, not to complete, like... The dungeon, you don't need dive technically, but just to get here, you need dive. So, you're going to have four HMs taking up slots in your inventory. Who do we have up front again? The bacon eater. I, I feel like we're going to be dealing with, like, Hoochianas and stuff like that. So, let's go ahead and throw Heretic out front and see what he can do for us. We made a kid around. Go home already. Hey, you're not the boss of me, man. You're not the boss of me now. You're not the... Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Team Aqua Run has, oh, there we go, a Poochiana. So I made the wise judgment call in pulling Heretic out front. It looks like he's about to level up, actually. So let's go ahead and brick break this thing. And I'm sorry, Poochiana. You're so adorable over there with your one little snaggle tooth sticking out. But your time has come to an end, by which I mean you're going to be fainted for a few minutes. And I, I don't know, would Pokemon Center's service, like... Team Aqua and Team Magma Grunts? I don't know. Is that That's a question of morality. That is a deep one there, man. I want to go home. <laughs> oh, we made a grown man cry. I want to get a promotion so I can boss around the Grunts. So your name can change to Team Aqua Boss instead of Team Aqua Grunt. <sighs> Either way, there are a bunch of multiple pathways in this place. And you can take them on, um, I suppose, if you feel like it. There aren't any, like, extra items for taking them on, though. There is a mini-boss fight, and, uh... 
Uh, well, actually, I have no idea where the mini boss fight is, but I feel like I, I should show it off. If you want to uh, just progress with the story, go ahead and go this way. But, uh, I don't know. Let, let's go find the mini boss fight. Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Spend some time doing that. So let's check what's through this door. Uh, we have a bunch of moving currents. Oh boy, this promises to be super duper fun. It looks like, actually, we can get across right here. So, I really have no idea where I'm going, so I guess it's just gonna be a shot in the dark with, uh, every one of these. And, ooh, uh, these are always so nerve-wracking because they bring you right past where you want to go. They show it to you, they're like, ah, you're going there! Just kidding! <laughs> <laughs> this cruel, this cruel, 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 awful game. Maybe it's the fact, maybe we have to, um, this is the room that you would get into if you took that door that I just pointed out a second ago. Perhaps the mini boss fight is in here, something along those lines? I don't know, nope. This takes you back to the entrance of the seafloor cavern. Gosh darn, man. <laughs> I have no idea where to go. Honestly, 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 I have no idea where I'm going, but let's go ahead and break this rock, and this mini boss fight better be worth it, man. This better be a very climactic fight full of suspense and full of sparks flying everywhere because otherwise I am just initiating a massive, massive waste of time right now. But you know what? That's okay. I want to show off the mini boss fight because Team Aqua doesn't really get that much of a chance to shine in at least Pokemon Emerald as compared to uh, Team Magma because you've got Team Magma, you fight uh, Maxi several times before we even get the opportunity to fight Archie or to fight a bunch of Team Aqua members. So why not show off the... Uh, very, very optional Team Aqua fights. Uh, okay. Okay. What are we doing and how do we handle this? Let's go ahead and push this one down here. I have no idea what direction we're going to be going if we, uh, if you haven't established that yet. And I kind of, I dislike the fact that you have to use strength every time you enter a new room. And I know, I know it's a small pet peeve that everybody sort of shares, but may as well point it out anyway, right? So, here we are in another room of the seafloor cavern. Where does this take us? This is going to take us into another room. Is this the room we were in before? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I recognize these rock smashable rocks. Uh, yeah, it looks like... Wait, is this the room? Is th <laughs> Oh my god, it all looks the same. It all just looks like brown terrain to me. And yes, this will take us back here. So hold on a minute. Alright, guys, so it's very possible that I'm just a little bit dumb. There is a Team Aqua member sitting just up ahead that really closely resembles the sprite of the one uh, Shelly admin that we saw in the Weather Institute. So maybe that's the boss fight and I was just walking right by it this entire time and wasting everybody's time. But hey, at least we got to show off a little bit of the oh-so-intricately-designed seafloor cavern. So uh, let's go ahead and continue on this way. And where do we have to go again? I believe up here. Yeah, there we go. And we can continue onward. But yeah, it looked like it was in a double battle. So I assumed it wasn't like a, um, you know, uh, what am I trying to say here? Yeah, an, an admin battle or a mini boss battle or anything like that. But evidently, that's what it looks like it is because this is pretty much all I can find with a red haired sprite. So is this it? <laughs> How did you manage to get here without a submarine? What an impressive child. But. It won't do to have you meddling about here. And I do want payback for what happened at the Weather Institute. I'm going to give you a little taste of pain. Resign yourself to it. And this random guy. For a dream to become real, we need the power of Pokemon. But meddlers like you use the power of Pokemon to mess with us even at a place like this. Life just doesn't work the way we need it to. Oh my gosh, it's so unfair. But here we go. This is actually a battle against the Team Aqua admin Shelly. There she is again, just as we face her with the... The Weather Institute, and she is joined this time by Team Aqua Grunt, the most ominous and the most dangerous member that you could ever imagine. And why did I decide to send out the Baconator first? <laughs> Facing off against two Dark type Pokemon, I feel like this is a really, really, really bad matchup right now. But we can go ahead and brick break this Sharpedo real quick and take it out first. Uh, Sharpedo is also really, really fast. If I haven't mentioned that, uh, and bring out because Baconator is probably going to be taking both of the attacks this turn. Let's bring out someone bulky enough to take two attacks. Which is our good friend Dishwater, who's going to bring all the power that we need to the field to take these guys out. So, get rid of that Sharpedo first and foremost. I figured maybe it would go before me, but nope. Nobody's going to be going before Heretic. Heretic has places to go and people to see. Heretic is in a hurry, so he is definitely going to go first on this turn. And what else do you have, Shelly? She has got a Mighty Anna. Oh, man. What a creative pairing that we're facing off against right now. Now, Heretic is double intimidated, but if you saw how much damage that that Sharpedo just took from our Brick Break, I'm not even worried about the Intimidate Man. I'm not even worried. So our speed is down. 
uh, two stages, our attack is down two stages, but you know what? The Surf should be able to take care of whatever damage that- Whoa, Dishwater, you're faster than Heretic, but Heretic's faster than these get What? <laughs> Alright then! But anyway, the uh, Surf from Dishwater is going to take care of all the damage that Heretic might not have been able to get off himself, so you guys make an absolutely fantastic team, and you're gonna swagger- Oh boy, alright, so now we're at neutral attack, but we're confused. This has the potential to be very annoying. Because it's not going to damage us a lot, it's just going to be really annoying and make the battle last more turns. There we go, alright. Heretic hurt himself in his confusion, but doesn't even matter because we have the opportunity to please... Oh, oh my god. Well, Dishwater's confused now. Uh, can one of you please attack? Please, Dishwater. Please. I know you can break through Swagger, so someone's attack is going up. Ooh, Dishwater is now plus... Uh, three attack, I think, because I think one Intimidate was gotten off on her. But, uh, Heretic with the Brick Break can take out this Mighty Anna. Fair and square. Nice and easy. We should be able to take this one out as well, so long as Dishwater is willing to break through the confusion. The Dishwater, come on, man. Come on. You're not pulling through right now. You are not as clutch as you normally are. And you're going to swagger again? All right. So Heretic now plus two attack. Dishwater plus three or something like that. So it's really, really going to hurt if this Mighty Anna gets hit by this Brick Break right here. And so it did. Oh, he is regretting that decision now because the power of a Heracross at plus 2 or 10 or 15 attack or whatever we're at is kind of unmanageable by a Dark Dog such as yourself. So, the last Pokemon we have on the field is a Golbat, and I'm actually going to switch out Heretic here because that has the potential to do a lot of damage to our friend Heretic because, once again, we were fighting a Golbat um, earlier in the series and I didn't expect it to do all that much, but it pulled out the Wing Attack. And kind of murdered our heretic in one shot. So, uh, why not try using Blizzard? I know it's probably not even going to hit. I probably should have just used Surf. But, hey, you know what? Why not? It's fun. Come on, get the static off. Nope, no static. <laughs> get the Blizzard off. Yeah, there we go. Oh, my God, it actually hit. And, ah, I can't get over it. I love Blizzard so much. I love it. It's one of those elemental attacks along with like fire blast and thunder and i suppose earthquake that just looks powerful even if it's not the most useful competitively it just looks amazing but there we go we defeated shelly for the second and final time <laughs> ouch <laughs> okay sure that was a really big precursor to not a lot of content ah! better than what he had to say though either way that does it again for the aqua admin shelly <laughs> you're so darn strong. It's terribly disappointing that you're not a Team Aqua member. Could have enjoyed the fabulous world our boss has promised as one of us. And I suppose that is too bad because we are not going to enjoy that world for ourselves. But, moving on through this door, we have ourselves something a little bit different. And immediately in this room, you'll notice that things have changed up a bit. We have no trainers, but instead we have this really, uh, rocky-looking puzzle here. Oh man, it looks so hard. <laughs> but seriously, this puzzle is a jerk. This puzzle is such a jerk. When I was a kid, it took me probably four to six hours or something to figure this out for the first time. Of course, I was a lot younger, so my cognitive abilities had not so fully evolved as they have now. <laughs> Sunglasses. But, um, this puzzle... Wait, am I doing this right? Hold on a second. Oh my god, guys! Oh my god! Oh my god! Seriously, first time, and I got the puzzle right! This would have taken me three days as a child to do. Oh my god, I'm so proud of that! That is amazing! Awesome! So, we did this puzzle on the first try, but yeah, there is a very jerkish strength boulder puzzle, and whoa. What do we have here? We have TM26 Earthquake! What?! Yes, the most powerful ground-type move in the game that's actually really useful in competitive play as well, because you can hit more than one Pokemon at once with it, it is just laying right here on the ground. Now, we're not going to be doing any multiplayer, um, competitive play or anything, but we have a very capable ground-type Pokemon in the lovely Dishwater who needs to forget that useless piece of garbage move Mudshot and learn Earthquake. 55 power, 100 power, 150 with Stab. We could boost it with the Soft Sand later on if we wanted. And, uh, wait, what's our higher stat with Dishwater? We're definitely gonna get rid of Mudshot, but I just wanna see whether Surf or Earthquake is gonna be more powerful from now on. And there we go, Dishwater learned Earthquake, the most powerful ground move in the game, and her moveset is truly, truly rounding out. But, yeah, what do we have, uh, higher? Attack is much higher than Special Attack, so if we equip the Saw Sand to her and, uh, start using Earthquake, we're gonna do a ton of damage, so I think I might just do that fairly soon. But for now, 
uh, that's not quite what's on our minds, because you guys see this haze in here, and you know what this haze means when we're inside of a deep and dark cave. So, what do we have down here? It looks awfully ominous, awfully, I don't know, a little bit familiar as well, and whoa, what is that giant fish thing? Hold it right there. <laughs> so it was you, after all. Behold! See how beautiful it is, the sleeping form of the ancient Pokemon Kyogre! I have waited so long for this day to come. It surprises me how you've managed to chase me here. But that's all over now. For the realization of my dream, you must disappear now, and we are finally facing off against Team Aqua's leader, Archie. And whoa, you are looking awfully spiffy there, man. I mean, I'm not digging the headgear, but you know, the suit, all right. The facial hair, all right. The little necklace thing, <laughs> it doesn't even look that bad. So you look respectable, almost as respectable as Maxi even. But Maxi was a little bit better shaven, a little bit better, um dressed because he didn't have his chest hair poking out the top of his suit but either way this guy's going to lead off with a level 41 mighty end and this thing is fairly powerful and clearly it's packing the swagger so it's going to raise our attack and make this really really annoying unless we can break through on this hit because i believe i'm going to want to switch off so can we do it you're going to use the super potion doesn't even matter because if i land this attack that mighty yenna is done for plus two attack heretic Nothing to mess with, especially not with a brick break straight on your snout, Mighty Anna. You look really angry about something there, man. How's your day going? It doesn't look like it's going very well. Either way, whoa, almost broke level 40 there. This guy's going to switch out to a Crobat, and uh, he has the flying moves Wing Attack and Air Cutter. I'm not sure about his other moves, but... None of that should be a problem for Shock. He might have Confuse Ray or something like that, which could be potentially a little bit annoying, but I'm not worried about it because Shock is faster than this fool anyway, and we're gonna deal all kinds of damage to him on this turn. Ah, oh, almost got him, almost one hit him, but yeah, looks like he does have Confuse Ray, so I guess that's going to be one of Archie's strategies, is confusing your Pokemon over and over and over and over, and oh god, it's a metaphor for life and how terribly confusing it can all be. I should have used a Thunderbolt, why did I not predict the item there? <laughs> Either way, he's only a half health or something like that, so we shouldn't be in too much trouble. And I was going to hurt myself anyway, so yeah, I knew that was going to happen, so I chose the, move wrong, the wrong move on purpose to make Archie feel good about himself now. Oh, and apparently his other move is Bite. And Shock, come on, you can do it, girl. I know you can do it. There we go with the Thunderbolt, and we took out the Crobat, because if you hurt yourself that turn, Shock... Things might have actually started looking kind of bad. I mean, I didn't really want to heal too, too much in this battle. So, there we go. With the level 40 Heretic, who is just way too strong at the moment for his own good, we are moving on to Sharpedo, which is Archie's final Pokemon. May as well keep Shock out here, because I know Shock's going to be able to take this thing out with absolutely no problem. And nom, 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 he is bouncing around the field. Is he, like, standing on his one fin there? Is that, what, is, is that what's going on here? <laughs> Snap out of your confusion, Shock. Take this guy out. We have got bigger fish to pr fry. And I mean that literally, because there is a giant fish standing just a few blocks north of us right now. And we need to take care of that thing before Archie does anything stupid. So there we go. Gain a little bit of experience on both of these Pokemon, and we've defeated Aqua Leader Ar Archie. What? I lost to a mere child like you? <laughs> I commend you. I must recognize that you are truly gifted. But I have this in my possession. With this red orb, I can make Kyogre. Ooh, the haze clears and the red orb suddenly begins shining by itself. What's going on? What? I didn't do anything. Why did the red orb... Where did Kyogre go? Hmm? It's a message from our members outside. Yes, what is it? Hmm. It's raining heavily? Good, that should have happened. That is why we awakened Kyogre, to realize Team Aqua's vision of expanding the sea. What? It's raining far harder than we envisioned? You're in danger? That can't be. That's just not possible. Hold your position and monitor the situation. There's something wrong. The red orb is supposed to awaken and control Kyogre. But why? Why did Kyogre disappear? Maybe he's like a bull. He doesn't actually like the color red, man, because he's a giant blue fish. <laughs> why? What have you wrought? Archie, you've finally awoken Kyogre, haven't you? What will happen to the world if this downpour continues for all eternity? The world's landmass will drown in the deepening sea. What? Don't get all high and mighty with me. Wasn't it you, Team Magma, that infuriated Groudon? 
So long as I have this red orb, I should be able to control Kyoga. I should be able to control it. We don't have the time to argue about it here. Get outside and see for yourself. See if what you've wrought is the world that we desired. Brian, come on. You have to get out of here, too. What happened? What is this wretched scene? Did I make a horrible mistake? I... I only wanted... Do you understand now, Archie? Do you finally see how disastrous your dream turned out to be? We have to hurry. We have to do something before the situation goes completely out of control. Brian, don't say anything. I know that I have no right to be critical of Archie. But the way things are now, I doubt that we humans will be capable of doing anything about it. But neither can we stand by and just watch helplessly. The responsibility for putting an end to this falls to Archie and me. This defies belief. Those super ancient Pokémon, their power is unbelievable. They've upset the balance of nature. Brian, what is happening? This is terrible. After the scorching heat wave ended, this deluge began. If this doesn't stop, all of Hoenn... No, the whole world will drown. This huge rain cloud is spreading from above Sutopolis. What in the world is taking place there? There's no point in arguing here. Sutopolis might provide answers. Brian, I don't know what you intend to do, but don't do anything reckless. Okay, I'm going to Sutopolis. And now we have Steven involved. Maxie and Archie have realized the error of their ways because invoking the power of extremely powerful super ancient Pokemon, probably not the best idea to get what you want. And I know they might be a little whiny, they might have some attachment and some spoiled issues, but um, invoking the power of almost literal gods? Eh, perhaps not the best strategy in obtaining what you want, like I said earlier. Either way, we can see that the weather is fluctuating between this drought-like heatwave state and this incredible deluge, this downpour of rain. So Steven is headed off to Sutopolis City, and... I showed you guys on the Pokenav just a second ago. We are going to be going just there. And there's a giant diving spot around Sutopolis City, so you need a diving Pokemon to get into there. You should already have one because we just got out of the Aqua Base, which uh, also requires a diving Pokemon to get into. But Sutopolis City is marked by... Where are they? Giant white rocks. Once you start seeing those, you know that you are getting close to the place. I'm going to go ahead and go to the south side of the place because that is... Uh, where the entrance to the city is. Go ahead and dive down here. And this is actually where I caught Relicanth, was in, um, these seaweed patches right here. You can catch Clamperl, you can catch Relicanth, and, uh, yeah, you can catch stuff like that. So, here we are moving in to Sutopolis City from underwater. Light is filtering down from above, and let's go up and see what's going down. Groudon and Kyogre are battling it out in front of our very eyes. Oh my god, look at all of this right now. I can't even handle it. Hey guys, can I get an autograph, please? You guys are really, really cool. Oh my god, Groudon, I really like your stripes today. They're looking quite perky. Either way, uh, you can't interact with these guys whatsoever, and they're going to pay no heed to you, a puny mortal. So, here's Maxi and Archie. Kyogre, what's wrong? Look over here, it's the red orb. Calm down, Kyogre. It's no good. It's not responding at all. Groudon, please stop what you're doing. I know the extent of your power now. If you keep going all ho and not just Sutopolis will be utterly ruined. Man, they're assuming that these Pokemon speak English. What are you guys doing? They're just like waving the orbs at them um, frantically and hoping something will happen. Those Pokemon fighting, Groudon and Kyogre. The two super ancient Pokemon were awakened from a long sleep. And now they were smashing each other with their uncontrollable energy. Brian. You being here now, I'll take to mean that you're prepared to become involved in this crisis. Well then, there's someone that I'd like you to meet. Come with me, please. The ten-year-old who shall save the world! But yes, Steven is taking us to a place we will be able to help in this adventure. We've got... Ooh, listen, Brian. Does seeing Groudon and Kyogre make you think Pokemon are to be feared? But that's not true. Pokemon are really more... Why am I asking you this? You already know. 
<laughs> Man, I learned a heck of a lot from that, Steven, but he is taking us to a place where we will be able to aid in the adventure. We are going to need help in doing so. We've got two incredibly powerful legendary Pokemon over there. I mean, we have all the Reggies in our uh, PC, but that might not be enough. So he's going to move that old man out of the way. And, okay, here we are. Inside here, you'll find someone named Wallace. I think you have what's needed to help him. And we are sent into the Cave of Origin, the most ancient place in all of the Hoenn region. And in this place, in Ruby and Sapphire, you would actually find either Groudon or Kyogre, depending on the game that you're playing. But here we are in the deepest part of the Cave of Origin with blue and red crystals on the sides. And here is presumably Wallace? Ah, so you are Brian. I've heard tales of your exploits. My name is Wallace. I was once the gym leader of Sutopolis, but something came up. So now I've entrusted my mentor Juan with the gym's operation. Groudon and Kyogre, the two Pokemon wreaking havoc here, are considered to be super ancient Pokemon. But there aren't just two super ancient Pokemon. Man, what is a super ancient Pokemon? Is it like next level normal ancient? They're considered to be? Is there like an objective standard for this? I don't understand, man. There is one more somewhere. Somewhere. There is a super ancient Pokemon named Rayquaza. It said that it was Rayquaza that became the two combatants in the distant past. But even I have no clue as to Rayquaza's whereabouts. Brian, do you perhaps know where Rayquaza is now? If you do, please tell me. He, yeah, he's at Don't Rememberville. Huh? You don't remember? Hmm, that's a problem. Can't you remember somehow? And we can sit here on this menu for the rest of eternity. And yeah, it's kind of impossible to miss this because if you tell him the Cave of Origin, the place you're in right now... The cave of Origin? But that's right here! I need you to do better than that! Please, I need you to think about where Rayquaza might be right now. <laughs> Mount Pyre, he's chilling with that old man and listening to that story, so he'll be done in about uh, 12 hours. Not Pyre. But when I met the old lady there earlier, she made no mention of it. I very much doubt that the old lady would try to hide something from me. Brian, could you think about this more carefully from me? D Dude, I'm giving you ideas and you're just striking them down left and right. If you don't actually want my opinion, don't ask. Hm. Okay, fine. Rayquaza is at the Sky Pillar. The Sky Pillar? That's it! It must be the Sky Pillar! Brian, there's not a moment to lose. We'll head to the Sky Pillar right away. And Wallace teleports out, but this time we do not get uh, the courteous notion of teleporting us out with him. So we are doomed to walk out of the Cave of Origin. What a terrible, terrible fate. But the Sky Pillar is that place just east of Pacific Log Town that I actually pointed out on our way there for the first time. Either way, leaving the Cave of Origin, we return to Steven. Sky Pillar. I've never been there. I wonder where it could be. A person with a strong will and superior talent. A trainer who has knowledge and experience of many kinds of Pokemon. If such a person were to appear, I was instructed by Wallace to lead that trainer to this cave. And it looks like the battle between Groudon and Kyogre is raging on, and the only way to stop it is to head to the mythical, the legendary Sky Pillar that has been talked about so far in this game, but never revealed. So, that's exactly what we're going to be doing in the next episode of Pokemon Emerald. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope you guys tune in next time to see the conclusion of the war being waged between these two legendary beasts down here. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you guys then.